everyone, and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today, I've got an important lesson for you about the three words you should never ever say or use in English. This lesson is going to help you improve all aspects of your English, but in particular, your vocabulary and your writing. But it will also help with speaking, listening, and storytelling as well. It's also going to be especially useful if you want to sound more professional. But more about that later. Before we get started, I'd like to mention one other thing that can drastically improve your English language skills. It's the Lingoda Language Marathon. I'm going to talk about this fully at the end of the video, but you can go to the time shown on the screen now if you want to know about it right this second. Basically, you can do 90 days of English lessons with qualified native teachers and get your full course fee refunded. That's up to 807 euros. But first, let's get on with the lesson. The first word that you should never ever say or write in English is, dare I even say it? It's very. Now, I've spoken about this horrible little word before, but I think it's essential that you understand why you should never use it, especially when writing, and God forbid, in essays, in exams. Very is a very weak word. See what I did there? It doesn't communicate enough information, and in my opinion, it's one of the most useless words in the English language. All it does is magnify another word. So how can you avoid using it, and what should you say instead, if anything? I'm going to give you some options, and I'm going to give you loads of vocabulary that you can use that will make you sound like a total pro, short for professional. First, I'm going to ask you a question. Which of these sounds better? The audience were very scared by the very loud noise, or the audience were very scared by the deafening noise. I mean, I think the second one sounds better. What have I done? I have replaced very and the adjective, very loud, with one powerful adjective that serves very's purpose. What about the audience? Were they very scared? Can we think of something better? How about petrified? The audience were petrified by the deafening noise. So much better and we've used less words, which is much better for essay writing because you have word limits. Here are some examples of words that you can use instead of very plus adjective. Very bad, atrocious, very poor, destitute, very risky, Perilous, very tired, exhausted, very hungry, ravenous. That is one of my favourite words, I think. What a fantastic word, ravenous. And very clean, spotless. I actually think finding these more powerful adjectives is loads of fun and it makes your writing and your speech so much more descriptive. Plus, you automatically sound like you know so much more English because you've got all these words that sometimes even natives don't know. I think this calls for some homework. Yes, even in free YouTube videos, you do get homework. I want you to comment below with at least three alternatives for very plus an adjective. Let's see how many we can get under the video and make sure to check out everyone else's responses so we have this huge resource for everyone to use. Go, 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 comment three. Right, the next one. Oh, what a terrible word, said. Said. It's such a boring word, it doesn't tell me anything. Now, the word replacements I'm going to tell you are more geared towards writing, but it will help you with your speaking and definitely your storytelling when you're recounting a lot of dialogue. So why shouldn't you say said? Because it's bloody boring, that's why. Read this. I'm leaving you forever, she said. No, he said. How dull is that? Let's try again but changing up the dialogue words. I'm leaving you forever, she announced. No, he cried. See, so much better, right? We could take it one step further with adverbs as well, but be careful with these because sometimes it can make the writing a little bit busy. Scatter them in every now and again. I'm leaving you forever, she announced powerfully. No, he cried pathetically. See, so jazzy now, isn't it? Now, I am a very generous teacher and I have curated a list of amazing dialogue words that you can use in your writing and in your speech, but 
a quick Google search will leave you with hundreds of alternatives, so make sure you do your revision. I've organised mine into sections. Anger, bellowed, snapped, cautioned, affection, consoled, comforted, soothed, excitement, babbled, gushed, exclaimed, fear, stammered, gasped, screamed, determination, declared, insisted, commanded. Can you tell I'm really enjoying this lesson? Happiness, sighed, gushed, laughed, sadness, sobbed, moaned, lamented. Show conflict, sneered, scolded, glowered. To show amusement, teased, chortled, guffawed. And for storytelling, recounted, recalled, resumed. I hope those were really useful for you. As I said before, a quick Google search and you'll have pages and pages of alternatives to said. Are you ready for the last word that you should never ever use? It is thing. Yeah, I know. Awful, isn't it? Isn't it just the most awful word, the most frustrating and annoying word in the world? My boyfriend always shouts to me, Luce, where did you put the thing? And I reply, what thing? And then he says, you know, the thing. It's infuriating. Words like thing and stuff are convenient placeholders. When we can't remember the name of something or we get distracted, we use them instead. It's actually really hard to kick this habit in conversation, so I'm not so strict with that, but it is so important that we don't use them in writing. That's just lazy. There is always a better word. For example, I looked at all of the things. I felt sad. You don't know anything about what's making me feel sad. How about if I say it like this? I looked at all my mother's childhood teddies and possessions. I felt sad. There, I tell you loads of information about the situation and you understand why I feel so sad. Seems obvious, but it's amazing how many people use thing in their writing. In conclusion, stop saying these three things. I've said it before, but it's very important. <laughs> ah, I did a funny, I made a joke. Okay, it is now time to talk about the ins and outs an idiom meaning all the details, of the Lingoda language marathon, which you can do for French, Spanish, German, English, and business English. It's new, woo! And actually, business English has got me really excited because I know so many of you are learning English to improve your career prospects and to find a job. The best way to learn a language and retain what you have learnt is to study a little bit every day and to practice with native speakers. I know that a lot of you don't have the time or the funds, the money, to attend in-person classes, so Lingoda is offering a really affordable and convenient solution. If you haven't heard of Lingoda before, it's an online language school where you can study with native qualified teachers anywhere, anytime, as long as you have a laptop and a stable internet connection. You study in a virtual classroom, with very small group sizes. There's no need to travel. Study at home, weekends, evenings, five o'clock in the morning, whenever you want. I've tried the classes out myself and I think it's a fantastic service for busy people like me. So what is the Lingoda Language Marathon? Lingoda want to offer you an extra source of motivation because let's face it, marathons are not a walk in the park. Successfully take one group class every day for three months and Lingoda will refund your course fee in full. I think that's achievable and many students manage it every year. But if that's too much for you, but you still want to challenge yourself, you can do the half marathon, which is 15 classes every month. And when you complete them successfully, Lingoda will refund half of your course fee. If you're interested in taking the marathon in English, you have two options. The standard English marathon is for all levels, beginner to advanced, and it will help you improve your general fluency. 
The new Business English Marathon is perfect for getting that new job or advancing in the workplace. Learn everything from interview skills, to writing emails, to giving presentations, to hosting business meetings. Please note, this is for English levels B2 or above only. The marathon runs from the 1st of October 2018 to the 1st of January 2019. And don't worry, Lingoda have made special arrangements so you don't have to take a class on the 24th, 25th or 26th of December if you don't want to. You have to sign up before the 21st of September 2018 and pay the five euro entry fee. But if you use my voucher code LEARN1, you only have to pay 50 cents. So use the code LEARN1 on the link below. After paying the entry fee that secures your spot on the marathon, you automatically sign up for a three month long subscription. Every month you'll be charged a fixed amount, that's three times in total, depending on which marathon you choose to take. If you subscribe straight away, you won't be charged until the 24th of September, but you can still cancel your participation. You've got 14 days from signing up to stop your first payment or to get a refund for your first payment. So how do you get the refund? Lingoda will refund your marathon tuition fee in full if you attend an agreed number of classes within each marathon month by following the contest rules in the terms and conditions. There's no trick or catch here. The only thing that's required from you is that you really show up on time to your lessons that you booked and you actively participate. If you book a class and miss it or you fail to book a class at all, you'll still be able to continue taking the classes in the marathon but you won't be eligible for the refund. Places are limited, so make sure you sign up sooner rather than later to avoid any disappointment. The most important piece of advice that I can give you is check the terms and conditions carefully and familiarize yourself really, really well with all of the rules. Past marathon graduates have said that this is the key to getting the full refund. So are you ready to start the most important three months of your language learning journey? Click on the link in the description box and use my code LEARN1 to start your marathon. If you have any questions about the marathon, contact Lingoda directly and their amazing, helpful team will assist you. <sighs> That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And to those of you who have decided to take the marathon, best of luck. Oh, you're doing such an amazing thing. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook, I've got my Instagram, and I've got my Twitter. And I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah! All aspects of your English, but in particular, your vocabulary. Where's my finger? <laughs> okay, so how can you avoid using it and what should you say instead? Scrap that. Scrap that, Connor. <laughs> no! <laughs> I have curated a list of some fantastic dialogue that show amusement. Babbled. Gushed. But stop saying these three things. Places are limited, so make sure you sign up soother rather than soother. If you have any questions about their manner, <laughs>